offer. Very good. Deuce Staley was in for an interview for the open running back position. The Browns <laughs> interviewed a defensive line coach from Tennessee while they haven't gotten rid of their current defensive line coach. Chad O'Shea and Bill Callahan reportedly staying on for now at least. So, guys, with the other coaching moves that are going on in the Brown circle right now, which one stands out the most? Interviewing a defensive line coach when you still have one, bringing Deuce Staley in. Where do you guys want to start? I mean, you know, we all know who Deuce Staley is. Sure. Um, is he better than Stump Mitchell? I mean, who knows? <laughs> I mean, Where's I'm, he I'm been? The, I don't, wait, was I'm Deuce the, in Philly? Uh, no. No, Deuce is, Deuce is a running backs coach, right? Where is he? Carolina. Yeah, Carolina. Um, uh, if you were, if you loved Carolina's running game this year, then I think he's a great choice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love Deuce Staley as a player. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have some information yeah. that I have not been able to corroborate, but um, if this information is true, so I won't give the reason why, but uh, I feel comfortable in my source in saying this. Uh, the, the reason for the change at running backs coach and Stump Mitchell being gone was not performance related. Okay. That's mm. what I'm told. Gotcha. So the reason had it was it was something else other than performance. His players love him. The running backs love Stump Mitchell. Yeah. And by all accounts, he's done a really good job. Now he's had a great running back. And this year he didn't in the running game looked very, very subpar. Yeah. Without Nick Chubb. Um so I don't think that this was a situation where they were saying we've got to make a change here because the performance is poor. There was another issue. Now, Jake, can I ask real quick. Sure. Tony, Tony Grossi tweeted yesterday. Yeah, he was fired for being a media leak. Is that that's it? I did not okay. see. I did not see. Tony Grossi report. put that out there. So that is that is what another reporter has told me. Which, by the way, if you're going to start firing people for leaks, and again. <laughs> You're gonna. It, that's whack a mole. Well, because you here's what fire I was everybody. told. <laughs> here's what I was told. Um, the news that got out was already told to and corroborated by four other people before anybody outside of the players corroborated it. So you you've yeah. got leaks. You will always have leaks. Every team's got leaks. You're never going to get every, rid of them. Every the, the, Bill Belichick, believe it or not, yeah, had leaks. The head coach has a, a guy or, gir- or girl that he talks to. Mm-hmm. They all have one, at least one person in the media that's their person when they want to put stuff out there. Yeah, I that's didn't just see Grossi's report. I didn't see that report from Grossi. Um, did he write yeah. that? He tweeted it. Okay. Well, yeah, because uh, a person told me yesterday, and I'd asked a second person this, and they said, Pretty sure that's it, but I'm still working to get that confirmed. So I didn't want to go. I didn't want to say anything about it. But as yeah. long as Grossi's reported it and it's out there, I have heard it from someone else that's very yeah. credible. So um, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, guys. Brothers, 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 brothers. But brothers. that's just that's disappointing if that's mm, true. That's, here, here's what you got to do. Listen, always assume that uh, the police are watching. We don't talk to police. We don't talk to law enforcement. <laughs> we really don't talk to the FBI, Stitches. CIA. And here's the Stitches. thing. Unless they put that Bible there and put me under oath, I, I don't know, bro. Listen, the best way to do it is, you know, you'd, you'd be surprised. They'd be like, gee, the first thing they ask me, you on UCSS? What is them guys really like? Is this, this, that, that? What's going on with this? What's the name? How much money they get in Jeep? I'd be like, look, bro, I don't even know. I, I come two minutes before the show. I just do my thing and go home. <laughs> like, no, I don't. You're not getting that from me. I don't know him like that. Like, just already know. This is crazy that he lost his job because he was leaking. But that was what happens when you, in a, you ain't on the top of the food chain. You can't leak if you're the running backs coach. If you're the passing game coordinator, you can get that off. You can't get that off if you're the running back coach. Nope. Yeah. What in general? I mean, I, I just I, feel like <laughs> it's an overly meddlesome. I, I think the only reason I would fire somebody for something like that is if I felt their intentions were coming from a bad place. Sure, and maybe they maybe, maybe they felt maybe, that way. Maybe there's yeah. a history of this. Right. They've traced things to him. Yeah. And, they and they've him. gone to him and said, "Stump, we can't have that." Now, if that was the case, and he was warned, and he did it again then you can understand it a little more. However, this is what I'll say. I think the Browns 
and the way they handled all of this. They're sensitive. What? You didn't think it was going to get out? Like, I, I, they were, it was they weird, were very yeah. angry at how this story got out. And I don't understand why. Right. These, that's are, wasted energy. They always put together early. a damn media release. It happened yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah. I'm it for, wasn't broken until early Wednesday morning. Like, you had time to get in front of this story. And I'm told that the reason they're upset is because they obviously wanted to put their spin on the whole thing. Sure, you yeah. talk about people getting fired? They, they, yeah, he, he came out and was like, "Yeah, I, I, yeah, I confirmed that the uh, yeah the, these guys are on their way out." I don't know what he leaked. I don't know what he told and to whom he told it. I right. have no idea of that. Again, I was told right. by two people that one person definitively this is why. The other person said, "I'm very, very sure that that's why." Yeah, but I'm Grossi not. said he's heard it all day. Grossi's so. reporting it. He must have confirmed it yeah. probably from someone else. So my thing is, if. Stop being concerned about the stuff that you don't need to be concerned about. The sto- You did it. Now you're mad that the media reported it. We were going to find out. You I think mean, that we were going to be six games into next season and say, hey, where the hell stumped? <laughs> <laughs> do they not know the business? All this stuff gets broken before they're ready to do it. So, you know, it, the Browns are not unique here. Every team... Information gets out before one thousand percent. Yeah, what, what the Browns do is they don't they don't take advantage of their goodwill. Like it's like three days after the season, right? You you played your tail off, you lost. Everybody's ready. There was to get a good it. feeling. It's a good the, feeling. It's a good good. Everything's good. Well, they, we weren't feeling great after the playoff. No, game, but, but in but, general yeah. about they, the team in, and yes. the progress they've made, yes. and particularly the organization. Yes. yes. Now they're getting hot over. Uh, that's something that they did getting out to the media yeah, from someone within the organization. That's, yeah. that's going to happen forever. And here's why. In the old days, there were four guys that covered the NFL for a living on TV. That was 4,000. Now there's 40,000. <laughs> yeah, right. We've got a local guy who's a student at Kent State yeah. break who has news. broken a number of big stories around the Browns this year. Brad Stainbrook, shout out. It was a wonderful job by Brad. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to some, porter, some reporters yesterday, and because this is now a topic, yeah. we were talking about ethics in journalism and you know how these stories get broke, what you're obligated to tell a team before you break a story. Like, that was never in any of journalism classes. Like, you've got to inform your, uh, your subject that you're covering when you're going to break a big story. That's a courtesy that oftentimes is afforded. Right. And oftentimes it's afforded because you want to give the organization a, re- a chance to respond. Well, and plus, like, now there's so much reporting of of um, rumors. Right, so, which is, I don't and like And now that. you get, you don't know, like, what's real and what's not. But you know what? It's up yeah. to the consumers, us, right. to decide who is legitimate That's and who right. is not. That's right. If I throw a name out, Adam Schefter, if he puts it out there, I believe it. You know, if right. th- there are certain people that if we hear they're reporting it, we know it is true. They've done that through hustle, hard work, and a decades of of a career He's, of being right. That's I still don't know game. what he was thinking with that Condoleezza Rice story. I don't I remember that one. Remember? On the, oh, I heard being Browns. A, yeah, I do. Yeah. GM. I don't either. He's made one other misstep <laughs> that 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 right. I'll never forget. Yeah. yeah that that, um, that was crazy. the Jason Pierre Paul thing. Um, oh yeah. yeah, that, yeah. With the well, fireworks well, and the John, fingers. Was it? I think it was John Morosi recently had the misstep with Shohei Otani. Remember? Yes, that he was said, bad. And I like John Morosi. He's going to Toronto, right? Well, yeah, he said he's on his on a flight to Toronto. Yeah, and he wasn't on a flight and boy, to Toronto. Boy, did he send shockwaves! And he apologized, and that's, you know we screw up sometimes. But, uh, but bull. So in yeah. talking to all these newsbreakers, yeah. and not just football, baseball as well. Yeah. I really have no experience with the NBA guys, although I worked with Woj. I, I know yeah. them. I've never really had in depth conversations about the machinations of their industry. Sure. I've had plenty of conversations with people that do this in the business of baseball and football. And here's what I can tell you. They live in fear, and they all have recurring nightmares yeah. that they lose a scoop on a major story, and they're called from their boss and say, how did you not have this? So what that leads to right. is the competition guys in that space. I would not for a million years, I wouldn't do what Adam Schefter does. The man, his life is right here. That's right. And my, the objective of me, how I want to live my life, I want to live less here. Don't and they, more here. Don't they, and yeah, Adam is in his many uh, phones. Yeah. And they live in fear. And what that does, Bull, to yeah. your point, 
it increases the pressure and they're more likely to hit send before they're, they're sure. absolutely sure because they want to be first. Yeah. I don't care if you're first. Just be right. These What's up, basketball I agree. dudes like uh, Woj, don't Shots. they have like a, a journalistic uh, pyramid scheme? Like where they get smaller dudes, they'll be like, yeah. Let, let, oh, you, there's some of that stuff. Yeah, they have that. people working for them. And of then they'll be like, yeah, go find that information, give it to me, and it's of my course. Which I think is, of course. I don't like that. It's, like, you know what? Yeah. It's, be, it's They're an industry. You know, and what yeah. is an industry? An industry isn't one person. An industry, you have people that work under. Now, yeah. Woj is never putting anything out there that he isn't completely sure is truthful. So, now, if you're one of his underlings... <laughs> and you give him something that he runs with and it's wrong, underlings you're not funny. one of you're his gone. underlings yeah. anymore. <laughs> like, you know what's You'll interesting never about that industry. field is that it, even though football is the biggest sport, baseball really has the most news breakers for whatever reason. I yeah, feel like with football, right. it's, al- it's, it's, it's almost always either Schefter, Rappaport, or lately Joe Cena. I mean, yeah. who and, else breaks news? And then, There's but, a couple of guys that do. Baseball Peter King like used ten. to be big. Right, no. he doesn't break any news Not anymore. anymore. Not anymore. Florio doesn't break news. They, Mortensen doesn't break they news anymore. Mortensen, they made Mortensen, news Mortensen give the, the stimulus package to your boy Schefter. Who? who? Yeah. Mike, yeah, we're going to come on together. Diana Rossini breaks news every once in a while. Yeah, once Here in and a while. Uh, yeah, she yeah, does. She's got, she's got every, nice sources. They yeah. got a couple. Um, uh, in general, you're right. I think you're right, Bull. I think the baseball community, and it might be yeah. due to the fact that uh, beat writer, you know, the individual beat writers that get cemented in with the team, baseball right. players they, move more frequently than football players right. do. Right. And perhaps now that if they had five sources with the Yankees, for the period of five years, and now one of them goes to the Dodgers, one of them goes to the Cubs. Right. It gives them sort of someone That's behind right. enemy you, lines in those cities. Baseball, not all the time. The big guys break a lot, most of the stories. But beat reporters do break stories in baseball. They do. We yeah. don't talk about it much because if it happens in another town, what do we care if the Brewers sign some crazy, guy? crazy part is there is no beat reporter. Who's the Indians beat reporter for TV and radio? And Paul Hoynes well, for Cleveland.com. Well, Hoynes has done it forever. But Zach Meisel for The Athletic and Mandy Bell for MLB.com. But Those there's no radio stations that have beat reporters. No, no, no. no. Well, we've said over and over again, this is a Brownstown. Yeah. That's crazy. You have to have a daily Browns reporter. <laughs> it's, it has been – it was a tough adjustment because I was used to working in New York where baseball is so much bigger. I'm, I'm with you. I mean, baseball is, you yeah. know, first in my heart. And I love covering it on a daily basis and having those nuanced right, conversations right. that you and I can yeah. have. But mo- our audience is really well, not. Well, I used to come on, like when I was working in New York, because I was like the fill in guy, part time guy. I would often come on the weekends after we would, at the time, we, they had Met games on the station I was at. Now they carry yeah. the Yankees. But I would come on after a Met game and I would talk about the nuance of that game, the pitching changes and all these things. Sure. And, we just don't really do that. No, it doesn't, we don't. It doesn't hit Unless today. it's a playoff game, you know. Right. 